reinstalling stuff and getting it just the way you like is a huge pain. So what if instead you didn't deal with all that? There are three ways to avoid it, ranging from really basic to really, really cool. And they're all in the playback bar. First, the intermediate one. You can bring one file with you and have your computer set itself up entirely. And this isn't just for stereotypical nerd Linux users. This Windows PC can have its programs installed, wallpaper changed, it can even be activated if you put your legit Windows key into the script. All without any actual manual intervention beyond just running it from a USB. And obviously same goes for Linux and Mac too. That idea of having a script set your computer up combines really well with another thing that Windows users really need to know about. Package managers. Sounds Linuxy, sounds complicated. It's an app store, and you do already have the Microsoft store, but there's also Chocolatey and Winget, and Winget is even built into Windows, it's an official Microsoft project. And yes, they're through the command line, so I realise, you know, running, running commands, a lot of people aren't interested in that, but that's where the script comes in. All you need to do is add one of these lines, and then the identifier for the app you want to install, which you can find and search on this website here. And then it'll install it, you don't have to touch it, you don't have to click through any installs, or go to any websites to to download things, everything's handled by that. On macOS, you'd probably want to use brew, and then on Linux, you'd just put the same command for the same package manager you'd use normally in the terminal. You can change wallpaper, connect to Wi-Fi, toggle between light and dark mode, set permissions for apps. You can change basically all the settings you would want on your computer through the command line, and just put that in a script and have everything ready to go for you. It will probably take longer to go through and find all the command line ways to change everything you need the first time, but you chose to watch this video, you probably reinstall a lot, so that might not actually be a problem for you, and it's really cool just watching it go. And if afterwards you find watching this video go was cool, maybe consider subscribing, or don't. Now the most basic one, so if you're more interested in the most advanced, coolest, and newest one, go to the playback bar, there's chapters. But now, if you're someone like me who's really interested in keeping all of your configurations exactly how you want them, you'll have that one app that just feels broken without the single setting changed. Or you'll have a program that you basically forget about until you lose it and realise, hmm, something's missing. Those kind of things often get missed when you're reinstalling, when you're just trying to get things into a working state. And then you might forget what you actually changed and have to spend forever going over and trying to refigure out how things used to be. So, as silly as it sounds, as basic as it may be, have you considered writing things down. It was a huge, huge, like, it, it sounds really silly. It was incredibly useful. Once I just decided, okay, I'm gonna reset everything and I'm gonna write down all the settings I change. This is especially useful on a phone where scripting isn't really something generally you can do, where a build script might be more applicable on a computer. But really, reset everything, write down every setting you change. Again, this is probably for more people who are a bit obsessed over it, like me. And then, when you go to reinstall, you won't have to worry about remembering everything. You should probably write these things down digitally though, since also, if you're like me, you'll probably be editing these a lot, and that's going to be a lot more awkward with pen and paper, but it is actually a really useful tip. But I would feel kind of bad dedicating a whole section of, of a video to a tip that's that weak, so I'd like to add an extra thing. How can you stay logged in easier? Even if you've got a password manager, setting things up from scratch is a lot of effort, even if you're just copying and pasting emails and passwords and email and passwords for ages. And relying on your OS's built-in backup program could be awkward for other reasons. Maybe it doesn't support the app you want, or maybe it backs up too much. For whatever reason, if you don't want to use it, maybe you just want something that could be applicable between all OS's rather than a special one just for Windows and Mac and Linux. If you just want your configurations and logins on another computer, you can just copy your browser's data folder over to a new one. And when I first tried it, I was kind of worried that, you know, won't, won't it realise it's on a new computer and everything break, or there might be hidden files that aren't being copied over or something? No, realistically. And you can think about it this way. Remember when Linus Tech Tips got hacked, and, have, and the hackers didn't actually have to compromise any of their logins at all, because they managed to steal their session token, just a file in the browser that confirms with the website, I am me, trust me, log me in automatically. The hackers managed to take only that one file and get access to everything without having to log in again, even though they were on a dis different computer in a geographically different part of the world. So for you, copying things over, you can basically treat it like that. Pretty much just works, and you can do it with things other than your browser too. It's kind of cool being on a whole new computer and then opening your browser, and s sometimes it'll even restore the tabs that you had open before a factory reset. 
It's pretty cool. On Linux, Flatpak apps will be in the .var directory in your home directory, and other apps should be in .config, Firefox, and Steam. Some aren't. Um, on macOS, you'll be your username, library, preferences, generally. And on Windows, it'll be the app data folder, which is a hidden folder, in your user directory. That's typically where apps will store things. You could copy those whole folders to a new OS, and most things will keep their settings the same, which is really cool. So the start of this tip, writing things down, will be applicable to basically all OSs, obviously. It's just writing things down. And this last one is generally more applicable to desktop things where you have proper access to the file system. But now, the coolest. No user intervention beyond installing the system and having everything you need be there. An image-based OS, or a reproducible OS, we'll get more to that later. Well, when you download an operating system, you're given an OS image, a file with all the things you need to install that operating system. That might be a Linux or Windows ISO file, or an Android custom ROM zip file. That'll include the basic things, and sometimes some extra utilities, but it's getting more and more common for those to be just installed automatically afterwards to save space on the image itself, since people have decent internet connections now generally. The cool thing is, you can modify those images, which can be used for bad, like how your laptop probably comes with enough helpful utilities to fill half the RAM. But it can also be used for good, like preloading special drivers, or apps that you're probably going to use anyway, or being modified by the end user to give them a fully set up environment before they've even done anything. You can do those modifications with things like NT Lite or Modwin or Ublue or the older ways that people used to make custom Linux distros but we're not going to talk about those. With NT Lite, Modwin or the ways that you would maintain a distro, you will install something from an OS image that is fully set up how it should be. Whereas with something like Ublue, you actually install a normal looking Linux distro but then you can switch image without actually having to reinstall the full OS. And with that you can customize them and have a, a bunch of different ones and you can roll back from tests and a bunch of cool things. But that is a distinction between the different types of things I'm talking about here. You can't do that with Windows, at least not to my knowledge, or the older Linux methods. The older things are custom OS images that you install from, but then from that point it's a normal OS. Whereas the newer methods are image-based OSs, where you can switch images and there are be there's better tooling, everything stays as an image. Which is definitely more versatile, but also can be more complex. The important bit for the title of this video though, is that with either of those types of image setups, you can add all the programs you need, the bunch of, a bunch of configurations, you can set things up exactly how you want and just install and go. So you've got a laptop with weird driver needs and silly power management. Oh, uh, a laptop with an NVIDIA GPU. You can install the drivers already without having to worry about messing with anything later. You could set up all of your content creation things so you can rely on your computer constantly working. If anything breaks, you can reinstall and not miss a beat. And if you've got a desktop and a laptop, you could even build variations of your own image that have customizations for each, like only installing the NVIDIA driver for the laptop one, but not the computer. And just as a bonus thing that I mentioned before, reproducible systems. The main one people know about being NixOS, which I actually considered switching to recently until I tried it for about two days and realized I'm not really about that life. It was much, much harder to set up than I assumed it would be if I wanted to get everything perfect. But it shares similarity with two of the previously mentioned things. It's kind of like build scripts, but it more standardized. Where you making a build script would run commands directly, have a big list of, of things that would change the settings on your system and install what you need. A Nix configuration file is more like a configuration file. It doesn't have any commands to run directly in it, but you run it through another program, so Nix rebuild, I think, or, or Nix install when you're installing it for the first time, and it goes through and sees the packages and it runs those through the package manager. And if you have home manager, it might see what config files you need to make and it'll go and make those, but you don't actually end Enter any commands directly. That kind of standardization and exact ways to do things got in the way for me. But it can be useful if you're a business because you can hire people who understand it and people can learn the ins and outs of one way so it's a lot easier to read other people's configurations and things like that. But for home users it's probably a bit much. But you can also treat it kind of like an image based system except one where you build the images on your own computer rather than downloading them off the internet. Because just like that you can try something and then roll back if it doesn't work and you can keep a bunch of different versions and test things. All of those are really cool features that I would like which is why I tried it. It's it's really 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 cool but a bit too deep for 
on me right now. And even though you might want to stay away from it because of all the Red Hat drama, I should probably also mention Ansible, which will let you remotely configure Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. It's made for servers, but desktop users can use it too. What do you think? And let me know in the comments if you have any other tips that could be useful for people for helping backup data or help when reinstalling things. Was the middle tip kind of a cop-out? Maybe, but it was legitimately useful for me, so I thought I may as well say it since a lot of people just kind of haven't thought about that. Subscribe if you think I've earned it. There's a Matrix and Discord server below if you want to discuss other technology things, and hopefully you've enjoyed. Bye.